Hello and welcome to Pirate TV's post-game coverage of Seton Hall women's basketball. I'm your host, Liam Play, joined by my analyst here, Bobby Steiner. Seton Hall took a loss today, 85-65, to to the DePaul Blue Demons here at Historic Walsh Gymnasium. I was very close in that first half, Bobby, but then DePaul just kind of ran, ran away with it. But let's look at that first that first quarter specifically. What did you see from the Pirates there? The Sydney Cooks really took the game into her hands. She was perfect seven from seven to start the game. I, I believe she scored all the all of our, all the team's buckets through I think the five minute mark, four minute mark in the first quarter. So she really carried that. Yeah, Sydney Cooks definitely played a large role. She was hitting them from mid range, underneath, and they did try and like force the ball I think to her a few times, which kind of led to Seton Hall being behind at the end of that quarter by three points. And one interesting thing, Seton Hall was playing without their starting guard, Maya Jackson. And she's day to day with an injury. I mean, how much did you think that that really affected the Pirates? That had a massive effect on it. They just got very lucky that Sydney Cooks was able to carry the way that she did. Yeah, and Jackson, that, that's a big player in your starting lineup. But she was replaced by Amari Wright in the starting lineup, and she played she played a great game. And Coach Pazella talked about Maya Jackson's injury and Amari Wright's performance. So here's what he had to say about his two guards. Um, Maya, Maya's day to day with an injury, so she's one of and we had two other kids dressed that are injured what we had address just in case so we're still hurting and you know I, I think a big part of the team's success is that are good Quaid and DePaul they've had the same starting line every game the 23rd game in a row DePaul's had the same starting line and it shows the consistency um, we've got to find a way to be able to do that more. but you know I felt bad for Maya she was very upset she couldn't play she tried but she just couldn't go and I, I think Amari was you know obviously you know practiced a lot better was maybe a little nervous at the beginning, but I thought it gave us some really good minutes. And I think Amari's a very good guard. She's got to get more consistent and more confident in herself. And hopefully today we helped her with that confidence. Now looking at that second quarter, that was a complete dead even quarter, Bobby, between between the both both of these teams. 13 points each. I mean, what made that quarter so even between the Blue Demons and the Pirates? It was mainly Seton Hall's defense. They're really contesting, st stopping their crazy offense from three. That's pretty much why, in my opinion. Now in that first half, Sydney Cooks had 22 points, and she really stood out for the Pirates, like you mentioned in the first quarter. But then looking at the DePaul side, Morris had 14 points, along with the freshman Morrow to go with her eight points and nine rebounds. How big of a difference did those two players play for DePaul in that first half? They, they like every game that DePaul plays, they are two of the biggest catalysts for them. Without them, they wouldn't be nearly as elite as they are. And that, that second half, like you said, the defense really came alive, and both teams really struggled from shooting, specifically DePaul from behind the three-point line. Now, Bobby, would you would you determine would you uh, uh, determine that due to Seton Hall's defense or just DePaul shooting poorly? I, I think it's definitely a bit of both. It definitely helped Seton Hall that their shooting was pretty cold that that quarter, but they, they definitely had a good defensive showing. So the Pirates went into halftime down three points, 38 to 35. And like we said before, Sydney Cooks led the way for the Pirates with 22 points. And she ended the game with 32 points. Uh, so here's what Coach Bazell had to say about her performance tonight. I, I think early in the game, we did a good job of getting her the ball. She was very active. Um, I think as the game went on, we, we didn't see her as much as we should have. And that was disappointing in itself. But Sydney has a lot of talent. I'm proud of her. She was very frustrated after our last game. And, and, and I told her what I needed her out of her and expected her. And she's a well-raised, smart, team-oriented player. And instead of being upset, she was upset with herself. And really, as you can see, had a couple of good days of practice and played really well today. And I'm hoping she can build on that. And as a team and program, we can get her the ball better and um, we continue to develop. Now the score at halftime was a lot closer than what the final score was. The difference between three points at halftime and then 20 at the end. And DePaul really ran away with the game in the third and fourth quarter. Bobby, what do you think allowed the Blue Demons to do that? The Blue Demons, it was, it was two things really. The Blue Demons just out-rebounded Seton Hall by about 10 or 11, if other stats if I remember correctly. And the Seton Hall, there's too many turnovers again. They were trying to force too many bad shots and it, and it really cost them. Yeah, and, and uh, honestly, the rebounding, too, that we mentioned. I mean, Mara finished with 25 points and an astounding 27 rebounds. She really dominated the boards for DePaul and dominated Seton Hall just underneath in general. Then Morris finishing with 26 points as well to go with her 14 in the first half. I mean, these two, it was really a two-headed monster because Lexi Held didn't have a great game for DePaul. So, I mean, what do you think Seton Hall could have done better to kind of 
deter this, this two-headed monster from DePaul? Well, uh, it mainly just comes down to stopping them behind the three-point line. In, in, the second, in the second half, their perimeter defense started to deteriorate, deteriorate slightly, and, and it really cost them as well. Looking at the Seton Hall side, Sydney Cooks finished the game with 32 points and 10 rebounds, another double-double for her. But then one player missing from the points column, and that was Andre Espinosa Hunter. Bobby, I mean, that's a huge loss. She averages almost 18 points per game. How much did that hurt the Pirates in today's matchup? That hurt them an incredible amount, in my opinion. She was one of my players that I was saying to look for, to look for in the pregame show, and she ended up having zero points. It, it really was a, a huge blow for them. And definitely a player you're going to want to to really step up and you know Seton Hall they got a, a big couple games here I mean definitely some easier opponents I would say in in Butler and, Z, and Xavier coming up but coach Bozzello said there's no easy opponents here in the Big East and that's what he talked about in the press conference here's what coach Bozzello had to say about their upcoming two games I, I don't think there's an easy part of our schedule especially in the Big East with such good teams I realize their records are not as good as the teams we've just played but those teams haven't played together and haven't been injury free and haven't had a chance to play some of the other teams that they can be successful against. Um, so they're going to be tremendous battles for us. I mean, Georgetown's always played this hard. They're big, strong, physical, won another game today um, without a couple of their kids. So that's going to be hard. Right now, we're not in a good frame of mind. We're really struggling um, as a team. So right now, we, we have to worry about ourselves because right now, we're. we're we're, we got to just go back to the drawing board and try and understand why we're struggling as much as we are. So once again, the final score from Walsh Gymnasium, 85 to 65 to Paul, getting the win over Seton Hall here today. And and Bobby, final thoughts on this game? Final thoughts for the next for going forward from this point of the season. Just keep up that defensive effort. Nine blocks, pretty impressive. Uh, limit turnovers. Just let, let their offense flow naturally. I felt they they felt like I felt like they were trying to force too many shots. Uh, they had a, a, upwards of 20 turnovers. It really killed them. Like we mentioned today, or mentioned earlier, excuse me, Seton Hall will be on the road to play Xavier and Butler this weekend. And Bobby, anything you can really pull from this game that they can improve on in those next couple games on the road? Um, well, obviously, as I keep saying, just turnovers. That's my major point of emphasis. But just keep up the rebounding. Just sort of have that consistency to the whole game. Like they, they really out-rebounded DePaul in the first half. That second half fell apart, and it really cost them. Yeah, turnovers, rebounding, definitely going to be definitely going to want, want, going to need that bench to step up more. I mean, Cortesia Dean, like you mentioned, she had a great game off the bench, nine points. Uh, she finished with the game, uh, but also going to want to get Maya Jackson back. So hopefully she can be healthy for those two games coming up. But for Bobby Steiner, I'm Liam Plate. That'll wrap up our post-game coverage. Once again, an 85-65 to loss for the Seton Hall Pirates to the DePaul Blue Demons. That'll do it for us here. We'll see you soon.